I have with me Udi, the filmmaker for We Are God. Um, I am so happy to have you here. And Thanks. Udi, um, would you just tell us a little bit about yourself so that we can get to know you and um, what gave you the inspiration to make this film? Sure. So uh, my name is Udi Zakin. A um, little bit about me. I live in Los Angeles. Um, originally, I'm from Israel. I was born in Jerusalem, grew up in New York. Uh, actually, I'm a psychiatrist. I went to medical school in New York, uh, then did my residency in San Francisco. So I was very close to Silicon Valley for a long time. Um, saw a lot of patients from Silicon Valley, Google and uh, you know, Apple, definitely a, a stressful environment. Um, and then um, I had a company called uh, Pacific Coast Psychiatric Associates, which mm -hmm. I sold about three years ago. And I decided then to pursue my love for film and um, started uh, studying documentary filmmaking. Um, so that's where I am now in uh, Los Angeles. Again, I'm almost done with my... Um, masters in documentary filmmaking so was we are god your first attempt at creating a documentary a full-length documentary uh it, i did a few actually it's a short it's a short so it was it was, was it your first documentary it was uh, not my first i did a few smaller ones shorter ones um uh maybe like i think i think this is my third yeah. oh it's your third documentary what were the other two documentaries about the first documentary is called I Am, and it's actually uh, about my coming out experience to my parents. Um, the second documentary was a character uh, study, um, and it was about uh, a circus performer. And it kind of goes into her, her life, um, giving up a daughter for adoption and reconnecting with her as an adult. Um, and We Are God is my third one. So what have you learned from making We Are God um, and having it, you know, you're you're kind of going through the film festival circuit right now with it. Like what has been the response? What are things that you've learned as you were filming this project? Yeah, so I was looking for um, a, a social issue topic and I remember just coming across uh, Mark Zuckerberg's keynote about Facebook changing its name to Meta. And, um, you know, he had all the, uh, the, the, a little bit like the virtual house and the virtual offices. And um, uh, not long before I saw the documentary, The Social Dilemma. Um, oh, yes. The, the Social Dilemma. And, and I think uh, technology brings, uh, also a little bit of my, my background, before I went into medical school, I studied computer science. I was a programmer. Okay. Um, so uh, I was very familiar with the power of computers and what they can do for us. And um, I think technology is great, but I think we also have to be careful. As a psychiatrist, I saw some of the downsides of, uh, for example, the the iPhone, the smartphone, it's it's a great device, really changed our life, but um, there has been some negative consequences. For example, I've seen like a huge increase in people presenting with complaints of ADHD, a, a, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, so it's it's very hard, for example, today you need to multitask. And so there are things that we should be aware of. And when I saw the keynote um, of Mark Zuckerberg talking about the metaverse, uh, I mean, a, a great, it's, there's a lot of great things about it, but also I, I was really struck by him, by him just making it sound like this is the a gift from God, the, the next best thing. Um, and I think... I saw some red flags, flags coming up and saying, wow, this is going to be difficult for what effect is this going to have on society? Oh, um, yes. So I decided to research more into it and saw more commercials and advertisement and, you know, about I remember this one commercial of this lady with in the living room with the with the goggles on and, and uh, with the headset and uh, her husband cooking in the, in, in the back and it's like, okay, it's presenting it as, as it's, this is all great, but what about the connection between people? Mm. 
especially for teenagers, for, for kids. Um, we know that social media, there's been increase in um, eating disorders, especially mm -hmm. body, body dysmorphic body. disorders, yes. body image issues and anxieties. And um, yeah, it's not that it's it's all bad. It just needs to be monitored and, and, and to be aware of. So as I was researching in um, the film, I just realized how much of that already exists. And then I got in, realized, uh, got into about, you know, people having relationships through the, through the metaverse. And um, as a psychiatrist, I know that a lot, a lot of times, you know, we, we are resistant to dealing with some of our challenges, uh, some of our difficulties. And sometimes having relationships is a difficulty. Um, there are a lot of people who are very shy about it or scared. Um, and I think the metaverse can be, a, a, on the one hand, can be a good thing as a stepping stone, maybe for people who have difficulties, but it could also be an opportunity for people to get stuck in it. Um, and that's why I related to a personal experience in the film. Yes. Where for me, it was a stepping stone. Um, but I've seen uh, as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, people who can get stuck in in relationships uh, where they they leave it into they live in a world of a fantasy and not progress. Um, when I saw that that piece where they uh, recreated the 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 daughter that passed away for this mm. mom and you know some may say you know you ask what did people say about the film there are a lot of people what said well this is great you know you can give a mom the opportunity of seeing her daughter again and there were people who said wow I'm horrified this is this is going to be a bad thing like so um that's that's really what the 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 response I got I got from the film, which I really I really like getting this response because my point was not to say this is bad, we should not go that way, or this is good. It was just to start a discussion people, for people to start talking about and in thinking about the maybe potential pitfalls. Um, and and I did show a, a really good part of it uh, where. Uh, Dr. McMahon uses uh, virtual reality to treat uh, anxiety disorders very effectively. Yes, and the fear of heights. I thought that that was so insightful. I really, mm -hmm. really enjoyed that part because my my husband is actually afraid of heights. And really? so Yeah, and so it, it's not to the point where he can't, um, like, um, you know, like I know that there was somebody who was afraid of flying and, mm -hmm. you know, there was um, a, a portion in your documentary where, you know, there was a specialist who talked about how they use the metaverse to help people overcome their fear of flights. They simulate right. actually being on an airplane. And, you know, I was like thinking to myself, this is wonderful. Like, you know, this is like, when else can you help people overcome their fears, you know? you know, in this particular way, you know, mm -hmm. they don't even have to leave their house really, you know? So it was just, it was something that I myself saw, you know, as like a, as a positive and it kind of gave me ideas, you know, of, you know, other people who are having, you know, similar fears, you know, to maybe present it in like a metaverse environment. And because a metaverse environment is still very, very new, I was just mm -hmm. thinking, oh, maybe this could be like an opportunity, you know, like an opportunity for, for business, you know, from like a, from an entrepreneurial like standpoint, I just feel like, you know, it's like, I feel like, you know, a lot of people give Zuckerberg grief. They're like, oh, you know, like it'll never catch on. But I, I think that maybe in like 10 years, it, it will like, maybe not now, but maybe in like 10 years, I feel like he's way too early. You know, it's too soon. You know, I think it will definitely catch on. It's like when uh, people said, "Oh, online shopping is it?" People want people would like. Absolutely, I have no doubt that it's going to catch on, and it already is. And it's a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs. I mean, huge. Uh, as far as yeah, for from the medical standpoint, to yeah, for uh, Doctor McMahon so uh, talked about fear of heights and uh, fear of flying. Um, 
uh, social anxiety disorder, fear of, yeah. right? You could st simulate going into a bar and uh, you or a party and kind of engaging with people um, in the medical field. You know, when I went to medical student, uh, when I went to medical school, it was all hands on. Now they're actually creating, um, it, for example, surgeons instead of practicing on real patients, actually practicing on um, a virtual body doing surgery wow. um, in uh, so and also even you know I think anxiety disorders are perfect for that because it's a form of desensitization right if you're afraid of dogs if we simulate a dog and eventually enough you times go, yeah yeah and then you go in the real world with, with a real dog but what about people who've had um, you know, child abuse or physical yes. abuse or, you know, can you recreate, I mean, obviously would we would have to then create um, a metaverse tailored for that experience, but you could recreate in a way the childhood and let them go through it. Just um, find peace, right, yes, with it and exactly. learn how to stand up for themselves, like exactly. learn how to, yeah. Because right, that's what we do in therapy. As a therapist, I try to let the patient have a new experience and develop trust as as maybe a, a par parental figure. So we do that. I, and, and I think what Dr. McMahon's, um, the piece, it proves that the uh, virtual reality does have a real effect on our brains, just yeah. like the real world, right? At some point, we our brain doesn't know the difference. So you can really have an effect on the brain. So the possibilities are endless. Um, you just have to make sure it's in the right hands, right? Because just because you could do that and have a positive effect, if it's in the hands of the wrong person, absolutely, right? Absolutely. You could be in the metaverse and not even know that someone is affecting you in a way that they want uh, without, without you even knowing. So, but there's, there's huge opportunities. Um, and I don't doubt that we will be there. So another question for you, you, you know, this was your third documentary and, you know, you're going through your rat, you're finishing up school on documentary filmmaking. What are some of the other films that we can expect from you in the future? Like, what are some other topics that you're interested in that you want to explore? You know, I'm really interested in people's, the human experience. And I think that's what my films have been on. So, uh, so far, like me coming out and, um, uh, Elena, the, the circus performer, who how she reconnected with her daughter. I'm currently actually working on a um, my thesis film, and my dad is 82 years old, and unfortunately, he has dementia and he's um, uh, kind of uh, cognitively declining. Um, we had a very difficult relationship our, our entire life. He's a pretty pretty opinionated it's his way or the or it's wrong and um and uh i've actually decided to to have kids through a surrogacy process and so this film is about uh i'm realizing that maybe my dad does not have um that much time left cognitively and i want to for us to get closer, especially now that I know I'm going to have kids. And ironically, as, as he's kind of cognitively declining, his defenses are kind of softening. And yes, that's what of, happens. Yeah. As you they know, get older, as, it's incredible. As they get older and, <laughs> and, and maybe he's reflecting on his life. So I feel like it's an it is an opportunity to get closer to him. And he's agreed for me to film him and my mom through this process. And so, and, and the camera, I think also gives me this, it, it lessens my-, my It's like a buffer. Exactly, it's like a buffer. So I can have these conversations with him that I've never had in my life and he can too. Um, I think he really enjoys the attention and, and being given the opportunity to talk about himself. and. So it's been, it's, uh, I've been filming for a few months now and um, it's, uh, I'm already seeing change, but um, uh, hopefully I can um, 
you know, I feel like I'm running against the clock here uh, with, with his state, but I think things are getting better. So hopefully it'll be an inspirational film for, because a lot of us, you know, may have difficult relationship with parents and ultimately we want to get to a point where there's some more peace and maybe forgiveness and understanding. Um, Absolutely. And I love that you had the idea to do that and the will to do that, you know, like you said, like while he's still, you know, cognitively, you know, with, with you, you know, he's right. able to follow and have those conversations and understand what's going on. Um, when, when are, when are the babies going to come or when is the baby going to come? So, so that's the film is also uh, following that process. I'm in the process of choosing the egg donor. And mm -hmm. then, um, so it's probably going to be with, uh, hopefully within 15 months. Okay, 15 months. Okay, so you're just starting the process right now. I'm just starting, yes. Okay, gosh, oh my goodness. So the the parts of this documentary film i mean because the thing is like with the documentary you kind of have an idea of like mm -hmm. how you want it to go but then when you're actually like filming you know it tends to have like these like sub stories that end up popping up that you didn't expect for it to pop up so i i'm positive that a lot of that stuff will happen <laughs> as you explore and jump into this world right and because you don't know how your dad's going to react right we don't even know if he's like you know going to be he might be you know fully cognitive like cognitively aware he may he may be at that point you know like far gone like you know just you know what i mean so it's like that's also something that's really interesting to kind of see how everything unfolds in that way too yeah, and that's something, I mean, the one thing that maybe is the biggest thing I've learned as a documentary filmmaker that I didn't know going into it was that, yeah, documentary kind of evolves. You have an idea, and then the story might sometimes become a completely different story. Yeah, than <laughs> exactly. And the question is, like you as a filmmaker, are you going to are you going to follow that change or are you going to be so set on what you want to say and why, you know, why you decided to make this film to begin with, where you're going to leave out certain parts because it kind of flies in the face of what you've discovered along the way. Right. So it's like, it, it's interesting as a, as a filmmaker, as a documentary filmmaker, like what decision you're going to end up making. Right. And what type of, you know, filmmaker, like, are you going to grow and learn like with the audience, you know, like you yourself, or are you going to be like, no, this is like, the message this is why I made this to begin with like this is like I want to stick to this like you know like which direction are you going to go <laughs> absolutely you need both you need to have some flexibility and adapt but you also don't want to run after every little thing you see because then you can end up with something that doesn't it's it's not a whole in its own so yeah you're absolutely you're you're right um I mean you're talking uh, 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 do you have experience in making documentary film um, no I just I watch I watch a lot of documentaries I did make I did make a documentary um um it was a uh, it was my father passed away and um he got into this freak accident but uh before he got into this freak accident I was making this documentary called yes regrets where I interviewed a lot of different people and they just kind of talked about their regrets oh, wow. and and the thing is like um because I know I have a lot of regrets and it's one of those things where it's like if I knew this you know, back when I was in college, mm -hmm. you know, like it would have absolutely affected some of the decisions that I, that I chose to make. Right. And so it's like, I wanted to have a film out there where people could watch something like this, you know, and they could learn from it and they could be like, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Or this is what could happen if I just, to do that right and so i interviewed my my mother and my father they're divorced they had a horrible marriage their entire life but i interviewed them separately and it was just so fascinating just you know just and so that's why i think it's so great that you're actually like recording your father as well because when he does pass you have this piece of art you know this video that you can just you know refer back to you can show your children you know like this is your grandfather you know like these are the conversations that we had and that'll lead you to be able to have the conversations with your children that you never had with your father you know so absolutely a very powerful thing wow it's um so um it's so great to hear about the topic of your documentary because it's exactly like I said what i want to do it's just these things that teach us and 
Um, you talk about like the regrets and sometimes people just watching that. And even if they can't redo what they've decided, just knowing that other people are gone, right? Yeah. You know, sometimes we think, oh, other people are perfect. They never make mistakes. They're yeah. and seeing that is just by itself is powerful because like, oh, you're not alone. I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Even, even people that I think are successful, I, that, that are successful have regrets. So yes. maybe that's part of life. And so I think that's, that's the power of, of, of documentary filmmaking that I really like. Yes. So you're currently working on this project right now where, you know, you're finding like that you're going through the process of having children, you're interviewing your father and having these conversations with him. So once this is finished, um, is it going to be like a feature length? Is it going to be another short? And what are your plans for just distribution, you know, when it comes to getting this film out there? Uh, so if currently it's going to be a 30 minute film for my th- thesis film, but as I'm doing this, there is so much um, good information that is, is uh, that I, I, I see it becoming easily being a feature. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to create a 30 minute film um, for the thesis, but I'm going to develop it as a, um, as a, uh, feature. As far as distribution, I have not um, thought that far. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm still early in my career where I'm learning that part, but I would like to go to production companies uh, and show the films and with their help, try to maybe sell it to a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu or... Yeah, definitely. And you know what? We we are actually going to be having a distribution panel next Friday as a part of our festival. So be sure to come check that out. It's going to be next Friday. We're going to, you know, I'm going to be reaching out to all the filmmakers, you know, um, by the end of this week on, you know, the whole process of, you know, here are the dates for you to check out the virtual platform that we're going to be using next week. Here's how to get your VIP pass. And here are the panels, like the schedule, like here are when the networking sessions are, here are when the panels are. So be on the lookout for this week, at the end of this week, to get all of that information. But Udi, thank That'd you so much. For just, that is yes, awesome. yes, thank you so much for sharing your film with us. You know, it it hopefully will spark a lot of conversation around the metaverse and, you know, things to happen and how like the metaverse, like it doesn't all have to be a bad thing. You know, there could be, that's no, the part that definitely. I really, that's the part that I really enjoyed about, you know, your film. It's like, I feel like a lot of people, you know, think the metaverse is like weird and it's kind of crazy, but it's like, you actually show like use cases of when it can be very valuable. So I thought that that was very insightful. Yeah. And also we, I, I don't think we can stop uh, progress, right? Progress is going to happen whether we like it or not. Now we need to embrace it because there are tons of good things about it. We just need to act in a smart way and, yeah. and be ethical about it. Yes. Well, Udi, everybody check out his film. It's in our video on demand. Um, It's in our video on demand building, our virtual building. So be sure to check that out. And Udi, we look forward to meeting you and getting to know you more next week during Speed Networking. Thank you very much, Christina. Have a great day. You too. Bye.